the Christian right has almost become synonymous with anti-abortion fanaticism. The abortion issue has become perhaps the primary source of fuel that keeps the Christian right going. But this has not always been the primary issue for the Christian right. What we are talking about here is the Christian political movement of Jerry Falwell's so-called moral majority of the late 1970s with Pat Robertson, James Dobson, Phyllis Shafley, etc. Abortion was a manufactured issue. That means that the flock of the Christian right, those engaging in protesting clinics, passing out pamphlets, acts of terrorism, and even murder, are reacting to something that obviously has no effect on their lives. The flock is outraged by abortion because that is what they are told to do. It is not a grassroots issue. It is a top-down issue created artificially by the leaders in the Christian right. The primary issue of the Christian right before abortion was maintaining racial segregation in educational institutions after the Supreme Court had declared it illegal in the famous 1954 ruling, Brown versus the Board of Education. Subsequently, numerous racially segregated private Christian schools were established in the southern United States, one of them being Jerry Falwell's Lynchburg Christian Academy. These were called SEG Academies. They were created for the specific purpose of avoiding racially integrated public schools. These segregated institutions were able to bypass the federal mandate for integration based on the fact that they did not see receive government funds. Then in 1971, the Supreme Court ruled in Green v. Connolly that a private school that practiced racial discrimination would not be eligible for tax-exempt status. This was the issue, not abortion, that initially motivated the Christian right. It is a common misconception that Jerry Falwell's moral majority was a reaction to the 1973 Supreme Court decision, Roe v. Wade, that gave a woman the right to terminate a pregnancy. This is what uh, professor and author Randall Balmer calls the abortion myth. In the early 1970s, the Southern Baptist Convention advocated legislation that allowed abortion, especially in the case of rape, incest, and condition in which childbirth may endanger the emotional, mental, or physical health of the mother. Until the moral majority was created, the evangelical Protestants' attitude toward abortion was indifference, if not approval. After numerous failed attempts to achieve maintaining tax-exempt status for racially segregated schools such as Bob Jones University, God changed his mind and forgot that racial integration was the worst thing that could happen in the United States, and suddenly remembered that it was actually the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision that really, really pissed him off. In case anyone hadn't noticed, the grand cosmic creator of the universe happens to be the most inconsistent motherfucker in history. The Christian right lost the battle for segregation. What they discovered was that the abortion issue was a gold mine, not just for money. The leaders of that terrorist hate cult are obscenely wealthy, but also its power. Unprecedented national political power never before achieved by a religious cult in the United States. Well, the cult leaders such as Randall Terry, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, etc., raked in tax-free millions, their mindless minions were obediently committing acts of violence, terrorism, and treason 
for the sole purpose of serving the selfish desires of those at the top of the American Christian Taliban. The efficacy of this power structure lies in the rhetoric that they used combined with the basic religious tenets. They have been consistently referring to doctors as baby killers. Abortions, they say, are a holocaust. Constant reference to Hitler's, Nazis, blah, blah. They present their sheep with the guise of a noble cause to save babies or end the slaughter. The sheep are well brainwashed. Here's a clip of Chris Hedges describing the type of brainwashing that these evil fuckwads do. I would interview women within the movement, and, and for instance, at, at, at a pro-life weekend. And one of the fascinating things, by the way, about a lot of the uh, radical uh, or, or, or most committed members of the pro-life movement, I found with women, is that not only had they had abortions, many of them have had multiple abortions. And, and the way the movement quite effectively manipulates their shame and their guilt, I found to be deeply cruel. They will take them off on weekends. I think it's called Rachel's Vineyard. And they give them dolls. And they tell them these are the children that they have murdered. And they must carry these dolls with them for the entire weekend and sleep with the dolls and clothe them. And at the end of the weekend, and these are women already struggling, you know, abortion is probably one of many things they're struggling with. They must offer up their children that they have killed to God and beg for forgiveness and commit themselves to fighting what is termed the culture of death. I have no doubt that many of the women who go through this and had one abortion are claiming to have had several. I have no doubt that some of these women have never had an abortion, but they must lie about it to be in the club. At some point, they will literally remember having abortions that they never had. The brainwashing of the anti-choice cults is very similar to the methods used by the Chinese Communist government. But that is for another, another video. Okay, my point is that it's powerful stuff. And yes, people do confess to crimes or sins that they never co committed and eventually believe their own lies. The followers are given inconsistencies and the doctrine of the cult is incomprehensible. Notice how that they, they are claiming that they are fighting for the sanctity of human life, yet they also support capital punishment. They violently oppose life-saving scientific advances. Some of them actually commit murders themselves and so on. Obviously, they give a fuck about the sanctity of human life about as much as a tsunami does. The anti-abortion issue fits nicely with a few things that the Christian Taliban does give a fuck about, such as the suppression of women, control of other people's sexual behavior, violation of individual privacy, and consistency is of no value to the cult. Obedience is of the utmost value. They are told to serve, uh, that they serve the purpose of God, but of course that means they serve the purpose of the cult leaders. Let's listen to a clip of Randall Terry when he appeared on Randy Rhodes' show about a year ago. Two groups, the Obama administration, the pro-abortion elements on Capitol Hill, are going to try and take this moment and browbeat us into surrendering our best weapons of rhetoric our best weapons of our actions, protests, and our most effective images, those of the dead babies. We must not surrender a single inch. Isn't this telling? The rhetoric, the pictures, this is what is most important, most important to these fucktards, not human life. It's time for a commercial break. I'll continue this discussion after this message. 
Hi folks, ain't it nice to liven up your home with decorative items? I'm sure you think so. That's why I have pictures on my wall like this one of our Lord and Savior, Jesus fucking Christ, and this nice picture of aborted fetus. You can get one of these at the Boarded Fetus Porium in downtown Fuckerville, Texas. We also got them coffee mugs, hood ornaments, electric fans, toasters, and rifles with a picture of a boarded fetus right there on the stock. I got a bunch of these myself, so come on down to the Boarded Fetus Porium for all your boarded fetus needs. All right, I'm back. Uh, so let's look at what this sacred rhetoric has accomplished. Have they stopped abortions? No, of course not. Is that what they want? No, they don't. Uh, they have managed to weaken Roe v. Wade so that uh, wealthy women can get abortions. It's much more difficult for poor women to get abortions. Uh, poor women are more likely to have illegal abortions, which is more likely to kill them, literally. In the 1950s, there were about a thousand women a year who died from illegal abortions. Yes, this is what uh, the Randy Perry types really want. That that makes them happy. Uh, also, being legal but not widely available also gives them uh, the doctors that they can kill, the abortion clinics that they can bomb etc. It keeps the war going. That's their cash cow. Very convenient. Um, it, it keeps people uh, available for brainwashing. Uh, so that's, that's what they've accomplished. They've, they've been very successful. They are a very successful terrorist hate cult. Uh, in the next part, I'm going to go on to another aspect of this successful terrorist hate cult, um, the anti-gay uh, aspect of it, to the other tine of Jerry's fork. And uh, so I'll see you there.